What's up, everybody? Sadiq Tuma back here with another NBA draft player breakdown. This time we'll be looking at Usman Jeng, a very interesting prospect who's playing for the New Zealand Breakers right now. Uh, just turned 19 about 10 days ago. Very young prospect, but a very interesting one. He's he's probably you know one of the more raw prospects we have in this class, but he brings a lot of traits that um, NBA teams will definitely love to break to excuse me to build on. Uh, at 6'10", 7-foot wingspan, 216 pounds. He moves very fluidly, very agile. We talk about that with Chet Holmgren a bunch and a bunch of those other big men. But he moves very naturally. looks like a guard. His movements are very fluid. You'll see that a lot with him uh, and the way he handles the ball. You don't realize he's 6'10". You see some of that Michael Porter type of comparisons, those sort of things. So, Jang, yeah, brings a lot of that. And his game is very unrefined right now. He does have some things that he does do very well and some traits that we'll start to explore as we go along so we'll start out we'll start with his uh three-point shot so the guy only averages about eight points a game you know an assist three rebounds so these numbers just don't add up to his you know production or his efficiency or excuse me his impact his um skill set you can't really line up the stats here but jeng is uh does do some things very well so like i said we'll start with that three-point shot and Jang, when he's uh, he's shooting 27% from three, very streaky shooter, still needs to improve that touch, but he does show that ability to pull up off the dribble and do that pretty well. Works off the catch and shoots, but he's, he's gotten pretty good at these um, pull-ups in certain situations. I think he's gotten a little better as the season gone on. Shoots a little over four three-pointers a game, so there's at least a little volume there. Doesn't have, you know, crazy great range uh, from way beyond three-point line or, you know, NBA range for that really matter. Um, but we'll see here with Jeng starting out on that wing, and you see him just kind of size up defenders pretty well. And over here, you'll see him just walk into it, right? He's got, as he goes, pulls up naturally and go. And he's he's got a little slower gather when he's um, pulling up versus when he's just catch and shoot. But overall, you like his uh, mechanics pretty well. Um, does have a pretty good elbow, as you see. Uh, gets that ball up. There's not really too much of a dip either, especially when he's gathering that ball and gets it up there. Not a crazy fast release, but, you know, it gets it done. Um, obviously, like I said, all of this comes with a caveat of 27%. Still needs to refine that. Uh, needs to hit better. But there are a lot of promising signs. Over here now, and we start with Jeng over here. And this play is interesting because you see the way that the breakers get in the ball very very often it's off these pin down looks um where he gets a dribble handoff normally pin downs you get the ball curl cut and you run in or d dribble drive or shoot or something or another but they always run those to get him the ball on those dribble handoffs and then a lot of times he's running pick and roll sets after that so you see him over there he gets comes up there grabs the ball right here now the pick and roll is initiated come from left he drives in and now he's got a switch and this is another thing to really hinge on because when you see his game Almost all of his points are coming off pick and rolls when he's attacking or you know making a play for someone else or on switches where you see here, right? It's not a pick and roll he's driving in and finding a guy or scoring. But because of that pick and roll, he's um, getting switched and then he'll attack one on one. Still needs to improve as a one on one ball handler overall, um, but it does show a lot of promise in those ISO three uh, off those pull up threes. See him here. Right, couple dribbles, size up, step in, sidestep, and pull up. And it looks very smooth and fluid, right? And it's good that he's doing some of those things because in an NBA today where guys are switching left and right, many teams are just switching everything. If you get those mismatches, you need to be able to execute. Over here, right, similar look. Like I said, off that pin down. You got him over there. See him run. Get the handoff once again. Pick and roll. Gets here. Again, same thing. Switch, right? Size up, couple dribbles, nice behind the back, and shoot that. He's got a pretty steady handle, you see that. He's got you know pretty strong steady handles, good hesitation, spin moves, some of those moves. Um, but it's that combination of those fluid moment, uh, movements, excuse me, the natural motion, that ability to handle at 610, the agility. You combine that with the uh, size obviously and the you know some of the skill set and that's really where the upside comes from it's it, you don't find many guys who are at that size able to dribble and create that way and play that way and that creates a big mismatch right that's why guys like a Kevin Durant obviously he's 
on a different level, but guys like that, Michael Porter, are, are very highly heralded for that exact reason. And while Jeng is still raw, he still brings that sort of thing um, to the table. Over here, we'll see it one last time. Um, as that ball comes there. Um, so you get Jeng over there. And when he receives the ball, he's driving baseline. Gets cut off by the defender, right? But over here, he gets to the corner, right? Now you see it. Why I like this is he doesn't just give up after that um, and just pass the ball out. He's still going to attack, right? Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Gets an ISO. Very, very, you know, small area to operate from. Gets a couple dribbles, sidestep, and go. We'll see that in motion one more time from right here. Just watch that, right? Nice little step. And that's hard, right? And you see how well he's contested, uh, but it's able to... Sh Look at that. Very well contested, but able to get his shot off, get it off cleanly, and scores. It's a combination of those, a lot of those traits that you really like to see. Now, the interesting thing here is, even though he's got, you know, that pull-up game, shooting off the bounce, shooting off the dribble, he's he's really pr kind of, uh, doesn't show too much of the mid-range. In fact, across five games I watched, he only took one mid-range uh jumper and you know made that one but there isn't too much there but again you see those same mechanics you see the way he can shoot you see the way he can pull up there's no reason why he can't attack that range he's going to need to when he gets to the nba especially when you're in those pick and roll sets uh where you got a drop defender and we'll see it right here All right comes over gets a handoff a little pick and roll and we'll step back for just one second Over here, comes back, and it's a, it, it's the handoff that goes right into that um, low roll. But the reason I like this, that defender right here, he comes under the pick, but Jeng doesn't just give up. He doesn't shoot that shot that isn't that he knows he's not amazing at. Instead, goes back, keeps attacking, finds that soft motion. Got right here, this guy drops, not crazy amounts, but enough. So Jeng settles in and pulls up, right? You see it in full speed, gets that motion, settles up, and scores. And if he does more of that, it's going to only make him more and more effective. And then over here. Like I mentioned, a lot of pick and roll sets, especially when he gets downhill as a driver. He, he's a much more finesse guy. He's not, he's not going to physically impose you. In fact, he's not gonna, even going to come close to that. Uh, at 216, needs to put on strength and become more of a physical driver. And that's one of the things that holds him back from, you know, shooting a very good percentage and being super efficient. 40% only. And it's you see a lot of um, struggles at the rim, which we'll touch on. But there are things that he does well, right? An excellent floater. Has some of those good Euro steps, side steps when he gets to the rim. And with that length and athleticism, which is pretty... He's got an inter interesting first step. It's not, you know, over-explosive is going to bounce by you, but has good long strides and uses it effectively to get where he needs to along with that body and size. So we'll see him here in that corner. So as that player starts running, runs again, pin down, gets that ball, and then right here, right? Now you got that pick and roll going. He gets in there, a little step, and you see it. Right hand also, right? He's not very good with his left hand. As you see him come downhill, right, sees that little one-on-one, -on -one, doesn't go into the body, steps away, but because he's so got great touch with that floater, scores through. Over here, you see it one more time. Got him over here, gets the handoff, and then goes. And over here, one more time, right? What do we talk about with that one of those last plays? With the uh, mid-range one, that, that pick-and-roll defender, him right here, or excuse me, the primary defender. Uh, he goes under that pick. Jeng doesn't just settle. Uh, he gets back, resets, and then starts attacking with his left. Gets right there, and that's a good in-rhythm floater. From right there, right? He's got good good space. Um, he's got this, this pick-and-roll defender right here who's stepping back. So he takes the right shot and scores. Over here, we start with Jeng at the top of the key. Well, I guess near half court almost. 
and about to run that pick and roll set. Pick comes in from the right. Cheng just attacks downhill and scores. And this is good because um, he's he he does finish through little contact here, but what you d very subtly see is his pace. Right as he's going down, he just slows down ever so slightly. And because of that, defender gets by him. Right, watch that big man. Um, right here, this dude over here watches. He's in line, but Jeng just subtly slows down, lets him get by, and that's why he's able to score. Good control and good good pace to his game. He has that good um, good at changing speeds and stopping on a dime if he needs to, but just doing it in that sort of way. Now we'll touch on his struggles. He's, um, I mean, it, it's pretty simple, honestly. It's it's really just comes down to strength and his ability to finish through contact a lot of times and the shots he doesn't take because he's not able to do that, right? Because he's not physical. As you got Jeng over here. Watch him, right? Run this play over here. Now he gets to switch, right? What does he love? He loves the switches where he can attack. Gets there, starts going downhill, attacks, and shoves away and misses. And you see it, right? As this defender stays step for step with him, that just switch defender, Jeng isn't going to lower his shoulder and go into him. He's just going to fade away and throw that up to no avail. Over here. We go, and he's coming through, and again, tries that little euro step to the side, gets to where he wants to. Um, because his drop defender is here, he's not pulling up in the mid range either. He meaning, Jeng is not pulling up in the mid range, so Jeng is going down right, a little right step, left step, and again, has to put that while he's fading away. This is again. Over here, uh, throws it to this guy right here and Cheng's over here now watch because this is his primary defender and this is the help defender and as as that play starts running handoff back and now all of a sudden this this help defender is going to switch onto Gen right and this is a matchup that he should want to feast on but gets the iso complete iso here you see him right goes in gets a little step and then just fades away and you watch it right as he's in that uh, position right here Obviously, this um, this defense knows that you know this is a mismatch. So this defender right here, he's already there, right, ready to help. So when Jen gets downhill, he gets a step, right? He gets a good step. He should get to the rim if this dude's not right here. But instead of you know again lowering his shoulder, getting to the basket against this defender and finishing through him, he he just opts for that that little floater, and because of that, heavy contest over here. Again, you got Jeng here running that pick and roll, and here they just collapse on him, right? And they they even block the ball in that one, uh, because as he's going, he's got his defender on his back, he's got this help defender in drop coverage, um, and so as Jeng goes, they just completely collapse on him. Uh, that roll man's not there in time, and so they just perfectly do it and. It's another issue, and those are the type of things you will you'll need to develop. Right? We talk about raw; those are going to be very important because they're only going to get more physical, stronger, faster, better switching movements, everything, defense schemes as you get to the NBA. So he's a guy that you're swinging for the fences a little bit, right? Banking more on his upside than you are on what he's going to give to you right now, and also you're going to need to develop him properly. But he does give you a lot of traits, right? And one of those is that athleticism. Talked about the first step, but his just ability, his acceleration, uh, straight line speed, it's its pretty impressive. You know, in the open court, he does look pretty fast and explosive there. Um, again, not the most explosive, not a J.D. Davidson, Kendall Brown, but you'll see it here. Uh, with this play going on, um, as you go, right, little step, and then watch him, right? Nice little move, and you see it, he just gets out there, good acceleration, good movement trait, and gets out there. Now his playmaking is interesting, he's definitely improving. Uh, one assist a game doesn't really do justice, he's definitely improving and, and has 
very is very good in you know the pick and rolls and making simple good reads out of those has some good you know one arm passes um still improving that aspect can still do a little work there but i think he, he's definitely gotten a lot of improvement and is doing a lot better job and you see it with a lot of the decisions he makes especially in those pick and roll sets which should happen all the time right so we start out here so play starts goes to the left simple little read pop down inside over here so you got Django again what's happening nice little throw easy right those are just simple easy reads that you just look at um, the defense they they come down they they double you they blitz you right we'll go back to that first one um, over here as this defender right here decides to you know go blitz then you, you got that open spot right and finds him here over here same thing um, as that second defender steps you got the guy nice little perfect pass actually throws it right to the spot right right to that left hand right here throws it out right to that spot perfectly good hands catch perfect in stride over here this I like this a lot so he's going and as he's going I like the reads he makes here because as that watch the pick and roll defender right right here as this play goes that pick and roll defender gets on his right right now this guy comes back and recovers and at this point right here um, there's a guy who's you know you can find an angle and take another step or something to hit this guy right here but what Jeng does very well is he reads the back line of the defense sees him right here this help defender right he understands he passes there the roller could be hit so he's patient lets the play develop and then makes his decision right so holds it a couple seconds now at this point this defender is all the way in that paint so Cheng holds on reading the defense using his eyes hits it good velocity to get to the corner and able to hit that three it's a smart decision I like the vision I like the decision making um, yeah his rebounding is really bad <laughs> three rebounds a game it's just indicative of his effort at his size his length it's it's uh, yeah putting close to no effort crashing the boards getting pushed around when he does um, because of his size that's another issue that does show up in you know, a lot of aspects of his game we saw with you know finishing ability uh, getting to where he needs to so over here we start with Jeng down here and as that ball goes up he's going to just get pushed out right ball goes up watch Jeng the other guy just boxes him out and pushes him out very simple and that's one of the times where he's looking to get a rebound most of the time he's not over here one more time got him here and as that ball's going up it's going in Cheng's in pretty good position I mean look where he is right now but you know just gets lets himself get pushed out just ever so slightly almost doesn't even put in much of an effort and steps out and those are some of the things he's got the upside to be a better much better rebounder if he does that because of the physical traits but at this side of stage it's a big struggle and his defense you see that's those strength issues pop up once again his defense is interesting because there's a lot of up and there's a lot of down he can be pretty good when his defensive intensity is good he stays pretty good off ball he's able to slide pretty well understands switches slides pretty well as a help defender does a lot of good things his one-on-one -on -one defense is inconsistent at times um, his lateral quickness is good sometimes sometimes he's just not sticking as well um, most of the time he is sticking I think he has good lateral quickness can get even better uh, sticks pretty well in those situations but then there's times where he does things that aren't very good and we'll see a lot of those different scenarios um, as we start right here so this man gets that ball and then watch him right gets chest in there just slides with him holds there and pass goes out I mean that was good defense right you're just sticking with him very easy not much else you can ask for and over here um, you got this whole pick and roll going on and you got Jeng as the help defender and as it goes on it's just very smart right gets their perfect timing feels that 
goes and blocks that, right? But more than anything, he's sliding to that perfect position where he needs to go help on those pick and rolls. And that's exactly what you asked from your weak side, guys. Over here, this is just good situal, situational awareness, right? As that ball goes there, five seconds left on the clock. Zhang understands that, keeps his man in front of him, does, just contains the ball very well. He does that very well, shows good um, prowess there. Um, and, right, just sticks, very easy, hands up, contests it very well. And then this is interesting. Um, you got Jeng over here still. I mean, right now you see him. He's the last man on the play. Um, as the ball's getting pushed down in transition, semi-transition, now all of a sudden you got this whole pick and roll about to happen right here, right, with all this going on. And Jeng is still out of the screen back there. Um, so it becomes a staggered screen look. And Jeng does, doesn't does have a man right now because everything is getting you know, sorted around. But... And, and, you know, most guys are just going to run down to the paint, find a guy. But this is good awareness and feel. Because this shooter, right, this is ball handler right here. As soon as he comes off the screen, he thinks Jen's just running down, and he's just going to have a wide open three, right? And watch that, right? Jen comes back and contests it well. But the reason it's so bad is because, like I said, mentally, if you're that shooter, if you're that ball handler, you're sure that you're just going to have an open shot off of that so you don't even anticipate someone being there so the fact that Jeng who's right here right now feels that understands the shots coming that's not even his man and now he steps up and contests it that's a contest that you're not really expecting so that's even more effective than contest you are expecting obviously um so contest it well that's what you see just a very you know poor shot and those are things you can do pretty well right as a help defender, as a one-on-one -on -one guy. And he shows that overall defensive IQ in a lot of scenarios. Over here. Um, okay, you got Jeng here. And watch how he just fights around this pick, right? As still sticks with him, right? And now he gets there. But from here, he just guy just finishes right through him. Um, even when he's sticking positionally, right? Like I said, he can contain that ball. But it's doing you no good if you're, you don't have that strength to... Um, keep him out there right guy just goes right into the shoulder lowers that shoulder finishes through and through and that's you know good defense in the sense that you're able to get to where you need to you're putting that effort but it's bad because you don't have the physical traits the strength in this in this scenario to be able to hold your own on defense and that's a problem over here um so as that ball goes into that post, you got Jeng right here, and you got his man right here. So as that play is going on, you will keep your eye on his man um, right here. Jeng, who's coming in, who's who's holding it in the paint, right? You got the man right there, and then he just feels it, and Jeng just loses his eyes. And you see this from time to time. This is a problem. You don't want guys to lose their eyes and you know bite on balls or anything. Right over here. It's about at this point, right? Where you see him. Watch Jeng. Watch him tilt his head to the right. Realizes his guy's gone. And now it's too late. And I don't think he has the foot speed to recover in situations like that. So even if there's a small step where the guy's getting already an advantage, it's going to be hard for Jeng to recover in those sort of scenarios. So on this pick and roll got Jeng um, over there on that strong side and again here he's gonna lose his eyes by just watching that uh, ball handler get downhill so as that ball comes in you got Jeng right here at this point this uh, guy on the wing is gonna start sliding toward the corner so you see it right gets to the corner and now at this point Jeng's already beat right right here um, because you got right here so as that goes in, gets to the corner, and gets that shot, right? And you're going to see he's going to miss that shot. But the problem here is that, one, you're not committing, you're not sticking to your man uh, off ball. And you shouldn't be helping because that is the strong side, um, which you don't want to help, right? Where the help should be coming from is here, if anything, right? If here, because those guys are around there. 
but Jang was on a strong side. This is exactly why you don't have off the strong side because it's a very short pass to get to the man and you get true from there. And right now, like here, yes, he does come back and contest. Yes, he misses. Obviously, a late contest, but he does miss. But in the NBA, when you're going up against those type of shooters who are going to make all those shots, that is a problem because these type of looks will be knocked down. And over here, um, you know, see that ball because that wing. And as Jeng, you know, gets a little overzealous, steps over, and he just gets beat straight off the dribble. And he doesn't get beat off too, too much. Here, you're going to see an issue where he does. Um, that's not great. And at this point, as he's still on his hip, this guy right here has to come over and help. So it just leads to that very easy dump off. And those are things you don't like to see. And over here, one, one last time. You'll see Jang again make a good play as the right play, but is not able to contend because of his strength issues. Um, so this whole pick and roll is going to go on over here. Um, and you watch this dude right here. He's going to get into the paint where Jang slides perfectly in but you're going to see the guy just finish right through him right jeng over here one more time so you watch him slide gets right into position and just bodies him out and that's really kind of you know just a i guess overall testament to his entire you know <laughs> strength weakness sort of thing when you look at guys like chet holmgren jabari smith uh or i guess chet's probably a better example here because he's a guy at 190 who's very underweight obviously uh, but he's very physical. He makes up for a lot of those things. And he has insane um, intangibles, obviously. But for Jang, it really does mess with him a little bit. And that's one of the things you have to improve. You have to improve his physicality. Uh, you know, improve his overall game. Tighten up his shooting, which is a big proponent right now. And you're going to see his overall game change, or rather flourish. But that's a thing you're going to have to develop properly along with everything but now he's being talked about as a late lottery pick mid first round pick because of um, all the traits you're seeing today and a lot of the things he can do pretty well so he's a guy that if a team wants to develop properly develop him properly take the time to do it then he could be a very good player in years it's all going to come down to how that all works together but I'm interested to see who takes him who wants to take him and how he's going to you know, end up in a few years. But that's been the sad report on Usman Cheng. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you did. And I hope you have a great day.